Hello, my name is Ben Zambetti, and I'll be discussing our recent study looking at the impact of endovascular repair on outcomes after traumatic subclavian artery injury. Subclavian artery injury is uncommon, though it leads to significant morbidity and mortality. Traditionally, open repair has been the standard of care for management of these injuries, though both open and endovascular repair have been shown to be effective. Because of the morbid incisions and difficult extensile exposure required for open repair, Endovascular repair offers an attractive alternative and has been used with increasing frequency. However, it remains unclear how mechanism of injury and type of repair impacts outcomes. Therefore, the goal of our study was to determine the impact of type of repair in both blunt and penetrating subclavian artery injuries using a large national data set. Over a four-year period ending in 2018, the TQIP database was searched for patients undergoing subclavian artery operations using ICD-10 procedure codes. Patient characteristics such as age, gender, comorbidities, injury severity measured by injury severity score in Glasgow Coma Scale, severity of shock measured by admission heart rate and systolic blood pressure, method of subclavian artery repair, open versus endovascular morbidity, and mortality were extracted from the data set. Patients were then stratified by both mechanism and type of repair and compared. A multivariable logistic regression was then used to determine independent predictors of mortality for these patients. We found 735 patients treated for subclavian artery injuries over the four-year study period. The majority were treated endovascularly, and there was a higher mortality rate in the penetrating injury group. Though there was no difference in morbidity or mortality for the blunt injuries based on type of repair for penetrating injuries, endovascular repair led to a 50% reduction in morbidity and over a threefold decrease in mortality. And on multivariable logistic regression, endovascular repair was the only modifiable risk factor associated with decreased risk of death. In conclusion, operative subclavian artery injuries are associated with significant morbidity and mortality. For patients with blunt injuries, type of subclavian repair did not impact mortality, while in contrast for patients with penetrating injuries, endovascular repair was the only modifiable risk factor associated with reduced mortality. Thus, for select patients with penetrating subclavian artery injuries, endovascular repair should be the preferred approach.